the a topic, and I get asked this a lot. What was the topic like at your dinner table? You know, because my dad had all of these cases and things. He never talked about his cases at the table. It was always his family. Chickadee, how did you do in school today? It was always centered around family, not what case, you know, he had and what was the outcome of that case and everything. He didn't talk about that at all. When you were older as a teenager, were you allowed to go downtown by yourself or with your friends? Yeah, with my friends. But we were told kind of where to go and where not to go. We could go down to shop. As I said, my dad's office was downtown. We could, we could go down there and, and look around uh, and shop, and we'd go get candy and peanuts and stuff um, and go to the movies. But as I think back on it, we didn't go downtown a lot, unaccompanied by some adult. And did you uh, grow up in the same house through high school years? Yeah, through high school years. We moved to, we moved to Dynamite Hill in 1953. And my sister lives in the house today. And why was it called Dynamite Hill? because of all of the bombings up in that area. Not all of them were on Center Street, but they were all within a very small radius of each other. And what were some of the other parents doing that their houses were bombed? Well, or perceived um, to be doing? Nothing other than buying property that was found, formerly owned by whites and trying to build on it. Um, there was a city ordinance that blacks could not live west of Center Street, which was the dividing line of the city. Only whites could live west of the Center Street. Blacks had to live east of Center Street. Well, as blacks began to occupy Center Street, uh, my dad, by the way, filed a suit against the city and that ordinance was eventually struck down as unconstitutional. So as blacks began to buy up property to the west of Center Street, when they would start to build, the house was bombed. So the name Dynamite Hill. And when you were in Birmingham, did you participate? Were there meetings, mass meetings, or uh, any activities in I the did. black community that led up to the more vocal reaction in 63? No, but I did at Fisk University. I took part in the Nashville demonstrations, sit-in demonstrations, led by Diane Nash. Um, we go to a lunch, we've been told how we should behave and, you know, certain things are done. We, we'd go to a lunch counter and sit down and they immediately close the place down and tell everybody they have to get out. And we just run to another place and uh, sit down and they close that down. And some of us, they loaded us up in paddy wagons and took us downtown. I never will forget calling my dad, telling him I was in jail. I wasn't really in jail. They didn't really jail all of the students. They just, they put us in this holding place to school officials could come down there and vouch that we wouldn't be doing that again or something. But that didn't stop them. And about what year was that? That was 1960. Two and sixty-one. And what did your dad have to say about it? He told me uh, to be careful. To be careful. Well, what do you wish that young people knew today about Birmingham during that time and leading up to sixty-three? Uh, uh, they need to learn about how difficult 
those times were for people who lived here in the community. And because of many people who sacrifice their lives um, to have things be different so that they could enjoy a better, I wish they had a greater appreciation of what happened and how because of what this person did, they're able to enjoy where they are today, whether it's being able to go to the, any movie or any school you want to go to. It was because of the sacrifice that people made many years before they were even born. And our young people really don't have an appreciation for that, I find. And even though if you came from a, a background, no matter what it is, uh, what I try to tell young people today, you can still do and become anything you want today, but nobody's going to give it to you on a silver platter. You have to work for it, and you have to work hard for it. Um, I do a, presentations anytime I'm asked before young people and try to get them to see that it wasn't things weren't always the way they are today. And I have to work on that with my my boys, my fifteen year olds, the only thing they know is what they have today. You know. No, but when I finish they'll have a great appreciation before that process is over. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the community about your life as a young woman? Well, I would, I would say that never say never. Never say what you're never going to do. Because I said I would never, ever come back and live in Birmingham, Alabama. But that Things change, people change, conditions change, and somehow I I felt that there was a plan for me. And some people don't believe in that, but that there is a plan, and when God has a plan for you, you know, you need to listen and follow that plan. So a lot of people think I've practice law all my life. I ran away from law as fast as I could. I didn't go off to school majoring in pre-law. I wanted to be a doctor. But organic chemistry turned me back the other way. So, you know, but you can become today anything you want. And never say never, because you, you never know when you'll have to eat those words. Well, we appreciate so much your taking time to share your thoughts with us today. It's been my pleasure. It's been wonderful talking with you. Same here. If you have any other questions? Yes.